Black Ball Deception is a game I didn't have too fond memories of, though this is not because of the game itself, but its role in the wider continuity of the series. This is the single most skippable entry in the series, with its only major additions to the story being minor setup and an interesting new faction of villains who end up being footnotes in the final game. Upon replaying it though, I'm surprised by just how well it holds up. While Deception is ultimately an unnecessary game for the series' greater plot, it has some of the best character writing for the whole series, fleshing out Rosa and Joey in ways Legacy and Convergence never had time for because of the focus on introducing the universe and creating greater lore. In terms of quality, I think it genuinely is the second best game in the series, my third personal favorite only due to my love for he uh, theme-heavy, high-concept stuff, which Convergence revels in. Also, apologies for calling Rosa Rose in previous Black Bull videos. Her shortened name wasn't said too often, so I often just shorten it to Rose in my head because the pronunciation of her full name, which is said more often, uh, gives off that impression. Hopefully, I won't make that mistake from here on. Anyways, Deception has Rosa and Joey well into their professional careers as spiritual investigators, opening with the two solving a case of a bank robber ghost hijacking a yacht. After they send him off and the boat crashes into the Jersey Shore, Rosa gets a call from her former co-worker during a village eye days, only to discover his ghost when she visits him. He was a reporter who ended up discovering a conspiracy revolving around the psychics of New York and a mysterious man named Gavin controlling them, and Rosa decides to finish what he started, discovering more ghosts and shocking supernatural revelations in the process. Deception plays with similar themes as Convergence, arguing the importance of living your life, though while that game was a uh, warning against trying to understand what cannot be understood. This game is more about understanding what makes you personally happy and not what you believe you need to be happy. There's a surprising bit with Rosa at the end that really cements this, showing the necessity of understanding yourself and not running from your own pain or insecurities lest someone take advantage of them and poison your own perspective. Otherwise, the game is far more invested in finally showing this draining work hitting Rosa and Joey hard as their old lives start catching up with them leaving them in a place where they realize they're not at all satisfied in helping spirits as their own personal lives have dried up or completely imploded. It's the argument of selflessness versus selfishness, and we see the crushing weight of both lifestyles. If Epiphany was delayed for one more game with the psychic conspiracy plot to tie up the big cliffhanger we're left with, I think Deception would be far more celebrated among the fanbase. However, I think it stands strong on its own, and I'm glad I got it either way. It reminds me of the Heroes episode Company Man, where a minor antagonist named HRG, or the horn Drew Glasses, was given an entire episode to himself, one fairly unimportant for the wider story of the show, but still celebrated to this day as the single best episode of the whole series, packing in an absurd amount of pathos and character death in just an hour for a character who barely had any before. That episode was so good that it legitimately got me to cry when I first saw it, and while Deception isn't that good because few things are, it does have a similar place in the series as The Company Man. It's not important, so to say, but it has the strongest character writing of the whole franchise, rivaled only by Epiphany's strongest moments. The game's presentation also has a very interesting history. It was the first released Wajidai game with art by Ben Chandler, but that landmark is hampered by an odd identity crisis. The original 2011 release had a very cartoony look, left over in the final 2013 version through the old character portrait still uses icons on the location selector screen. Chandler's sprite arc clearly reflects this, especially with Rose's more simplistic, exaggerated sprite, which now includes an idle pose where her hands are somehow open behind her as she walks around, like some goofy walk cycle you see in a cheaply made 1960s Hanna-Barbera cartoon, like an old Scooby-Doo rerun. I was originally shocked to see Daniel Rubinstein's original portraits in an old Destructoid review a few years ago, Partly because they weren't sprite art, and partly because they seem to lack personality. It's not that his comic style art is bad, it just lacks impact, possibly uh, not helped by the weak coloring. 
It would look better in a comic book with busier panels to work with, creating a better sense of action for these uh, expressions shown, but it just clashes with the rest of the game's detailed sprite art otherwise. Ivan Ulinov does a much better job with their more realistic and expressive portraits, matching better with the story's tone, but it creates a new problem of not really meshing with the goofy character sprites. Faring much better is the background work by Indrik Paluski, which is somehow more vibrant yet realistic than the art in the past games. Textures are more uh, realistic and surfaces use single colors now, creating a more believable world that strikes your attention much faster. It sells the idea that New York is a truly special place no other city could ever replicate, though there's also some cool lighting and water effects at points as well which help thicken the mood of the place. I also love the low lighting in rooms with a window showing the city, avoiding unnecessary stimulus and keeping your eyes focused on important objects or sights. Needless to say, Thomas Rain's music remains stellar and the voice cast is strong across the board. Despite the odd hiccup in the game's art direction, Deception holds up very well, even better than I remember. While it's not terribly important to the wider narrative and Epiphany's endgame, it's an excellent character piece with some of Dave Gilbert's strongest writing. It's a bit on the silly side once the big revelation is made, sure, but that big conspiracy stuff isn't really the focus. It's all about Rosa and Joey thinking back on all their choices, considering what to do from here, and wondering if they'll ever actually find their own happiness. There are moments in this game far more human than anything the series had done yet, and it's a great example of the greatness to come in the big finale.